to Wagstaff before that so that we could catch the ferry which would take us either to Etalong or Booker Bay depending upon how the tide was. Uh, bus from the, that point to Woi Woi, train from Woi Woi to Gosford and then walk up the hill to Gosford High School. So it was quite an effort to get to school in those days. In the meantime, the ladies of the area, they had a lot of social activity, particularly with the tennis. And if you look at the tennis outfits of the day, where they used to go off and play tennis around at Holwell's courts at Pretty Beach or some of the courts in Wagstaff itself. One fateful day in the history of Wagstaff was when Manly House caught fire and this was to change the character of Wagstaff for years to come. My father was there and there was a book laying on the ground burning over at Manly House and as the pages burnt they blew off and it blew across towards the shop so Dad was rather busy running around with a bucket of water dousing these sparks and embers. Kevin Walther remembers what happens next. On the site of the old manly house which was burnt down, the Ragstaff Hall was built. The right hand so end you can see the projection box. Which I can remember Granny Radford worked tirelessly for the community and especially for building the hall. Now to Wagstaff Point where Rod and Pat Radford are our hosts in an old house packed with memories. For example, this very important photo, taken back in 1916, shows the extent of the land before erosive forces washed much of it away. These were normal high tides, roughened by the ocean waves, lasted for some weeks and would pound the sea walls and require constant sandbag protection, or coral tree planting, and finally rebuilding of seawalls. It's hard to comprehend the extent of the erosion and the number of houses that were removed before we bought lots 1, 2 and 3 in 1938. However, a comparison here does give some idea of the extent of the erosion in 1920. We found many relatives and friends wanted to share our first happiness of our one home, Golden Sands, and to shed at Wagstaff. So, with the help of Reg Wright, we learned to cut rock to build another house and strengthen sea walls. Our new stone house, Silver Spray, is seen in the lower right hand corner, adjacent to our first cottage, Golden Sands. Why protected sea bars along the beautiful sandy beach were well used for many years with a contest of amateur water polo. Eventually, as we increased the tenant demand, Mrs. Horn sold us the adjacent lot four with its private wharf, three cottages, lotus, boomerang and Santoy. Santoy was on a permissive occupancy and built over the water. The magic of a Santoy Named by Mrs. Horn, after an early musical operetta, gave us the opportunity of giving our enlarging property the name of Santoy Estate. Our biggest setback came with the severe storm of 1956, which reached its peak at midnight with a record tide of 7 foot 6. Santoy Cottage and its wharf were destroyed. The low rock and cement west boundary fence on lot one was quite dramatically demolished. So much so, the following day, four senior council officers came to investigate. The advice and permission from these officers, who were the engineer, mayor, chief clerk and health inspector, was to build a circular wall conforming to the engineer's direction. With the advantage of the circular wall, we thought that further reclamation was unnecessary. However, the sea wall was constantly threatened and had to be supported by further reclamation. 
We successfully defended the challenge from the Department of Lands when we found the 1916 photos. All the reclamation, the cutting and handling of rocks was most important. Initially, Ridgewright was our help. Here I see my mother and father, helped by an experienced Irishman, building a building of rough stone in the Irish custom. We use this technique for toilet blocks and storage. All this was exciting work that gave a feeling of being worthwhile. Large slabs of rock were priced on the hillside with crowbars. Broken down with gates and hammers, the better pieces were squared off in the shape of a building. The rest were barrowed or trolled out to a point where they were stacked to make a sea wall. And so the Radfords, by filling in behind the sea walls, were able to restore the land lost to the tides and provide a fine recreation area for the holiday tenants of the Santoy estate. Now let's hear again from Kevin Wolfer, one of the tenants at the Santoy estate. Yes, that's me in the front of the rowing boat, of which was always included with the rent. And we regularly stayed at the Santoy estate from around the mid-40s. Radfords were very good to us. We used to love staying in that house at the end, right at the end. Very comfortable house. And it even had the old kerosene primus that we used for cooking. We used to stay in Santoy itself. And very worrying one night when the water came up with the high tide and my mother packed the bags ready for us to go. Holidays were a sad time because they came to an end and we had to get dressed up collar and tie because eventually we travelled on the train. We would all gather at the wharf which was right beside Santoy itself and sadly we'd get on the ferry and off we'd go. This was the way we developed Santoy. To gain a happiness we shared with so many people. Rod Radford, who was a pharmacist at Etalong, was also the owner of the amazing Amphicar. Read the story in the accompanying CD-ROM. Now let's head back to Kilcare. We could row back or maybe paddle a canoe. Or you could even travel on your own self-made vessel but it might be a bit hazardous. So here we are at Kilcare Wharf and I'm going to ask the little boy on the left, Don Anderson, to tell you all about it. We were very familiar with this wharf. Uh, we'd get off the launches when we arrived. We would play there too in, in the bars that you see. Uh, wasn't much good at low tide. There was not too much water there and plenty of, of weeds and reeds. But uh, we still had lots of fun because we were both good swimmers, my brother and I. The shop was the focus point of Kilcare for us. Uh, that's where we picked up the key. When we rented a house, we'd get the key there, we'd check things out, and the parents would uh, carry the luggage from the wharf down to the, the house that we'd uh, hired for whatever time. We'd climb the hill sometimes, and that must have required quite a bit of effort. But uh, Generally speaking, that the shop was the focal point because that's where we got our food. And they were within walking distance of the, the houses in the area. And this is one of the reasons why you had a, a selection of shops at each wharf from Wagstaff round to Kilcare. When I was a child, Kilcare Road fascinated me. It seemed to be composed of a, a very orange coloured gravel. When we came across on the launch around Daly's Point, you could see it in the distance. It really did stand out much more than it does today. Uh, just three quarters of the way up the hill, we'd turn right off Kilcare Road walking upward. And uh, there was a shortcut which led people through to Beach Drive. It saved us going that extra distance with heavy bags and things like that. And uh, one time there was a bushfire and we sat in this uh, on this track 